Before cancer, I was the clean eating, green drinking, yoga enthusiast, helping everybody else help change their lives through diet and exercise. I was so focused on everybody else that I ignored my own warning signs. I burned the candle at both ends, probably laid the groundwork to land me here because stress causes inflammation. Inflammation's a fertilizer for cancer. But the irony is, for much of my career, I had hosted the Leukemia Lymphoma Society's ball. So I was raising money for the fight I was about to have. I started to have some bone pain in my arm and I ignored it. I said, you know, it must've been that last CrossFit workout because my arm was hurting. Maybe two weeks later, I began to throw up and I was so sick. I went to the doctor and he said, you're gonna have to go get a blood test. After that result, he came to my house and my heart sank. And he came in the house and he said, you have AML leukemia. So I went on social media and said, I am in desperate need of a doctor, of a leukemia oncologist. I want to go to Johns Hopkins. Who can get me there? Within 24 hours, I had a world-renowned oncologist from Johns Hopkins saying, get on a plane. We have a bed waiting for you. You don't have time to waste. The doctors explained to me with AML leukemia, the treatment had not changed in 40 years and it was very toxic and still is. But he said to me, you have 25% chance of survival, a one in four chance of walking out alive. You are so fit and your heart is fit. We don't have to tiptoe around heart disease, diabetes, your blood pressure, any of these illnesses. So we can give you the strongest dose of chemo you need. Your chemo bag will be this big. So I had 10 months of chemo followed by full body radiation. And then when that didn't work and they told me it was coming back, that I needed a bone marrow transplant. So I had so much chemo, they said, you will have complications for the rest of your life. I have become a career patient. My son just has a servant's heart. He made me a card that said, the worst thing that ever happened to me was you having cancer. But the best thing that ever happened was you surviving. Now, if you tell me that doesn't bring tears to your eyes, it's almost so much pressure that I have to live. I have to live for this boy. He needs me. We go and make memories. It's not that I spoil him, but he's rich with memories. Cancer and my background as a journalist has made me realize that I am a change agent and I have the ability to change the way things are done for patients and make it better for patients. It's going to take time, but I know I'm a change agent and I'm going to go full speed ahead and channel my energy to do that. When I travel and speak, I say, rather than asking patients to beat the odds, it's time we change the odds.